Hi, Wheatland family. It was such a joy to be gathered virtually with you this past Sunday to worship the risen Jesus at our Easter live stream service. Um, so grateful to get to share that moment with you. Not like our past moments here uh, at Easter, but certainly how grateful we were to be together. And the video introduction that many of you sent in, uh, such a rich reminder to us of what a wonderful community we have here and all that God is doing, even in our distance. Um, I wanted to come today and talk a little bit about the fact that we are headed into week five of not having met for corporate worship. And if you've heard me each Sunday at our live stream, I have always said thank you to all those who have helped make the live stream possible. And this week in coming to you through this video greeting, I wanted to take a few minutes to sit and chat with Michael Rothermel, he's here with us. Uh, this is the first person that we called when we knew we had to up our video technology game. And so I'm grateful that he had a minute to sit with me and that I could introduce him to you because some of you may know who he is, but many of you may not know, and this allows you to put a face with that name. Um, Michael, I've gotten to know you and Saritha over the years as you all worked with uh, many of us during our ESL Kid Care on Wednesday evenings, but I wanted to uh, have you come and just tell the congregation a little bit about yourself and your family and how long you've been here at Wheatland. Yeah, so my wife Saritha and I moved uh, to Lancaster uh, after she finished grad school in uh, 2016 and then joined Wheatland a, a couple months later in the fall of 2016. Um, yeah, and have been here ever since and have really enjoyed um, getting involved with the ESL and being able to meet people through that and serve and um, yeah, have just really enjoyed Lancaster in general and just being here and uh, recently uh, bought a house in Hamilton Park. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I've just been really enjoying, enjoyed uh, being here in Lancaster and enjoying all the good that Great. Here is. Yeah, so you're right across the street, literally. Um, I know that you worked for quite a while at Hope International um, here in Lancaster. Tell us a little bit about your work there and what you're doing now. Yeah, so after I finished college, I had the um, great opportunity to come and work for Hope International and started on the design team uh, doing a mix of graphic design and web design and a little bit of everything some video and photo too and uh, as the team grew and i was able to focus more on, on video and photo uh, i was able to really dig into that and, and work on some great projects and documentary style projects and promo projects uh, and kind of stemming from in, in college i studied uh, business and bible at Cairn university uh, and did my honors thesis on nonprofit communication. And so that was kind of a neat segue into practicing what I'd studied. And um, I started in photography back in middle school and okay. from there dabbled in video, but it wasn't really till college when video became more accessible uh, that I started to work in video and made that natural transition from photography, which I still do now and then, but more and more doing more uh, film work now. Great. Um, I thought it'd be fun if you could share with our congregation a little window into what happens in this space on Sunday morning. So tell us a little bit about what it is you do to get us ready for live streaming, um, that mysterious little <laughs> thing that you're sitting behind and <laughs> dialing in. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so it's, Relatively simple, at least to me. <laughs> but, uh, um, the, so what I'm focused on is the visuals. Um, so I set up the camera and then we have a switcher board that it feeds from that into the computer. Then there's a software that sends that to YouTube. Uh, and then I'm working alongside Joe who's focused on the audio and making sure that uh, everyone sounds good and there's good audio feeds coming in and then he sends me an audio feed that I send through that same board to the computer and sync that up uh, with the video. Uh, and then Tim is on the other side ensuring that the internet's working well, there's no lapses in that, and that the stream doesn't cut out at all. Uh, and then um, once you're done in hair and makeup and join <laughs> right, us here on exactly. set, we uh, yeah get started. And um, I mean, once I 
hit live on there. It's pretty much up to everyone it's else. Out of your control. See, yep, I, I've set everything up, and then um, you and the musicians and yeah. uh, Keith or Sam, whoever's leading, kind of take it away, and uh, then I hit stop at the end. Great. So there really is a team of people. You mentioned to Joe Bramer, who is our audio guy uh, when we're gathering together in worship. Tim Mayer uh, has been helping us out with network connectivity. Andrew Belinda Bagabo was a part of all of this, um, just as far as equipment and tweaking our very first run at it. Um, so we're so grateful for the team that God has assembled here. You're, you're, you're a big part of that, and so many others are as well. But Really, on behalf of Wheatland, uh, I wanted to express our gratitude for the way that you jumped right in with the equipment that was necessary. We don't have any of this equipment. This is your equipment, the expertise, and then just the willingness and the open-handedness that you and Joe Bramer, Andrew Belinda Bagabo, the others, um, uh, I haven't even mentioned our musicians who keep coming. Um, so, yeah, we're so grateful for all of those. Uh, but... This, I think, live stream has been a bright spot in the middle of a very unsettling time. And I know I've heard from so many of you saying thank you for these services. And uh, we just wanted to thank you for the critical role that you're playing in keeping all of us somewhat connected in these uh, days where we just feel so pulled apart from our community. And Wheatland family, I am here not simply to give thanks to Michael, although we are very grateful for him and Andrew and Joe uh, for their gifts and their imagination. But part of doing this video is also to say to you all that are quietly slogging away in the mundane, it might feel like, um, things that are absolutely necessary but seem far from glorious or or something that you want to do a video about. I want to say to you, just to remind you, that you work, your work in these days doesn't define you. Um, perhaps this is something that we all needed to hear in these days. I know I very much contend to feel that my work defines me, and it's absolutely not true. And I think this forced Sabbath for all of us, it may be helping us understand that. Whether we perceive our work as essential, life-supporting work, or whether in these days we're finding it to be absolute drudgery, what we have to remember is that our particular calling at any moment in our lives is to contribute to the flourishing of the community that we find ourselves in, however big or however small and contracted that community has become. Um, and really, if we're thinking about it that way, in one way, none of our callings have changed all that much. Um, our calling as God's people, made in his image, is still to work with all of our energy to bring order out of the chaos that we find ourselves in. Friends, don't be weary in your well-doing. Um, I'm praying for you that God will give you the courage and the patience and the energy to keep doing that and I look forward to being with you on the live stream this Sunday.